Okay, we're ready to go ahead and start uh, arranging the first breakdown of the track. Um, the first thing we're going to do here is uh, kind of start off with this intro arp here. And that sounded okay. Um, I just want to go ahead and add the pads here. I'm going to what 32 bars of this. I'm just going to insert a couple kicks here to make it kind of uh, interesting. Hopefully I put these in the right place. I think that's where I want that. All right, sounding good. Now uh, I feel like we want like something real bassy and and dark and and deep right in this area. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get another alchemy. I know I promised we were done with alchemy, but uh, apparently not. <laughs> alchemy is really good with uh, soundscapes. Um, it's it just can provide some real luscious, cool sounding things very quickly. I'm just going to rename this to uh, dark soundscape. Okay, so go to category and do soundscapes um, from sound library. I'm going to select factory. And under Tombra, I'm going to want something that's dark and mysterious. Now, if you hold down the control button, you can actually select uh, multiple, multiple things from this list. And um, it will be kind of an and operation. What we'll be using here is Cadence of Triton. So the attack is a little bit long. We're going to go ahead and grab that. And maybe the release is probably too long too. So we're going to use uh, G sharp. Uh, one of the G sharps. Let's see. I'm going to insert one long MIDI clip here. G sharp 2. And just grab that and take it all the way across. Now yeah, we can barely hear it, so let's fix that problem. Let's take a uh, utility. There we go. All right, so one of the cool things you can do with uh, Ableton, make sure you uh, do store current snapshots. If you grab this remix pad and take it around, it'll change all the parameters on your knobs here and create different sounds. Um, it's also going to change your attack and release. So what you want to do is right click on uh, the attack and do copy setting to all snapshots. We just want that same attack and release for all remix pads. So as you see, we can kind of drag this around and create a very interesting sweeping effect as this is playing through the breakdown. Um, so what we're going to do actually is hit, uh, make sure your track is armed for record. And turn off the solo, hit record up here, and play. Just drag this around and uh, doesn't have to be perfect. sparkly effect around too. Okay. Hit stop there. Um, obviously we don't really need anything past that note. Um, sounded pretty good to me. 
don't think I would change much about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and freeze this. Um, this will free up the CPU a little bit. Just freeze it and flatten it. And goodbye. Okay, so now... Um, I'd like to add a uh, auto filter, I think, to, uh, it might be just a little bit too loud, maybe a couple dB down, three, maybe we can put an LFO on this, let's try that, let's put it in uh, sync mode here. Here are two bars. We'll go through this sign here. Not three, not two. It's too much. Let's try four, four bars. That's sounding pretty good. All right, we'll go with that for the uh, soundscape here. And uh, obviously, there it's getting kind of dull at this point, so we need some more interest to keep the the breakdown going here. So we'll add a symbol here, and we're actually going to go ahead and grab our full-on bass progression and put that in here. And take the filter sweep that's already selected. Um, we want that to slowly filter down into the, the main section here. One thing too, you kind of lose the sense of rhythm at this point in tempo. Um, but if you go ahead and put your clap in here, um, it helps a lot. Let's see here. I think it goes here. And why don't we just do this? Loop it here. That's not right. Let's try again. There we go. And claps, okay. If I consolidate these, it actually just kind of goes ahead and puts the loop all down for you. And camp it off here with another symbol sweep combo. And that's not quite right. And of course it's being kind of annoying. <clears throat> Hamilton's a little bit touchy here sometimes. Come on. You know where I want it. Why don't we just try again? It can be a bit ornery. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Let's just listen to it real fast. See how it's sounding.
I'm going to try something here. We're going to go ahead and grab the sweep effect we have from the base. This high pass sweep. Throw, throw that on the vox pad and see how that sounds. Um, obviously it's, it's silly. It copies the automation over. But uh, let's delete that automation and put our own in. Let's try this out. There we go. Well, that sounded pretty good. Wasn't planning on doing that before. bit of an iterative process here, but I think we're getting there. One thing, too, I'm, I'm noticing here is I think the uh, riser here needs to get that side chain compressed from the from the kick, so we'll just copy that over from the base and drop that in. Should sound pretty good. And more noticeable here. All right, that's it. That's the first breakdown. After this, we're gonna have another main section. Save your work, Control S.